Okay, everybody, so uh, here's another dev work progress whatever video. Um, so I'm working on render code. This is probably one of the more difficult things you will actually ever do in Minecraft modding, as there's no easy way to do it. There's no helpers, there's no handlers. You pretty much use OpenGL directly from Java, which means if you want a shape, you gotta program the shape. If you want it to do something, you gotta do something with it. Now there is 3D model loaders that exist um, for Minecraft, so you can actually load models and stuff. That actually does save a huge amount of time. But in this case, uh, I'm trying to render what is supposed to look like a rope. Now what I've done is I'm starting with the beam render from ICBM and it's actually in Volts Engine. This is what we used in the older versions of ICBM to render laser gun turrets. Uh, it would pulsate, it would rotate and stuff. Now I've killed the rotation off and I've killed the pulsing off. Although it does look like it is still pulsing, that is kind of an illusion. It's not actually doing that, it's just... I think there are three objects being rendered at the same time. If you actually look at the very far end up there where the grappling hook should be, you'll see what looks like little tapered edges. Um, so there's multiple objects being rendered. So it's my job to now make this actually look like a rope, which is going to be tricky. This is the code I gotta work with. Um, I've gone through and I've separated out the render calls and I'm <clears throat> working my way through on trying to figure out what some of this stuff is and what some of this not is. Now, I didn't write the original code for this. This was written by uh, Cal Clavi, who got help from uh, somebody called Azenor, and both of them, I think, got help from even somebody else. So this was uh, created by a collaborative of people to get something that looked like a laser beam. Um, what I'm trying to do is make it look like a buildcraft pipe almost, but I want to do this myself rather than going off and trying to grab help from people and do other things. Because after all, one of the things when you do Minecraft modding, it's a really good idea to try to learn how to do this yourself. Even if at the end of the day you don't do it yourself, you'll understand how the code functions. Um, so the next step I'm going to work on here is I'm going to disable this variable called F12. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this is used for, but that's the point of disabling it. So here's what it looks like now. And then as soon as I hit reload on the code, doesn't look like it changed any bit whatsoever. I need to notice I'm also floating. <laughs> this code, the code for the grappling hook does work, but uh, there's no movement handling, there's no momentum, there's no nothing. After I get all the rendering done and I get all the fancy stuff fixed where this is no longer climbing with my head. Also here in this position, you can see what I was talking about, those tapered edges, where I'm pretty confident how this is being rendered is there are three 2D shapes being rendered on top of each other. And I believe that is this code down here. So if we actually set, yeah, we go like t, int, uh, t equals zero, because there's code that actually calls t. And then what I can do is I can just uh, delete the for loop. And we should get, if I'm correct, one shape rendered. Yep, there we go. And there's a really bad rope texture we got. Now the rope texture actually does look good, so I'll go open, open that up real quick. Um, as I sit here, I'm actually still waiting on models and stuff. I thought the grappling hook model was done. I can't even view it because my SketchUp won't update, unfortunately. But uh, let's go look at the texture here. So here's what the texture actually does look like. A little rope texture, nothing fancy, and it's supposed to be wrapped around a 2D object. So I'm gonna have to play with the UVs to make this work, um, but I gotta do that all myself. So when you usually load a model file, how it works is it creates a vertex. So you'll have a vertex at some point in the thing, which is this right here. You define its X position, its Y position, its Z position, then you define the U and the V. U and the V are the locations on the texture sheet by which that vertex is sitting at. And when you go to draw all four of these, there's some kind of code that works in the background that goes, okay, these four have, these vertexes have these UVs, and based on their shape is what the texture we're gonna pull off. And in this case, it's literally just grabbing the whole texture. As these probably more than likely, yeah, I can actually start deleting sections of these. So that's a one, that's a one. We got a zero here and a zero here. And more than likely, this is supposed to be a one, and that's supposed to be a zero. So if we go here, this is V35. So length times size plus vertex 35. Vertex 35 is, of course, zero plus zero. So it's negative one. So 
our size, I believe our size defaults to, I think, point something. Yeah, point two. We actually probably could mess with this so this shows up as the correct UVs. Uh, the trick is, I don't know what these actually should honestly be. Um, this probably should be a one, and this probably should be a zero, but we're kind of guessing. But we're going to go ahead and do it anyways, because in the name of science, you got to test things. Um, if you're not sure what the answer is, the best answer is literally the test things. And actually, with testing here, that actually does look correct-ish. Now, if we go and open up... I actually opened up my texture in this, this program real quick. So we look at that, and then we look at that. It is correct-ish. It is being stretched by quite a lot. Now, there are ways we can fix this. One, I can go yell at my texture artist just to make me a texture that stretches properly. Um, that's not the way to do it, though. Because he'll get, get, he'll probably get upset at me. Um, the more correct way to do it, although unfortunately this does impact performance, is to duplicate the shape over and over again. So if you go back to the code, what we want to do is figure out... Well, we actually don't need this code anymore, but V35 is being used somewhere still. Oh yeah, it's yes, right being here. <coughs> okay, so you, these were your UV calculations. So we don't need those anymore. Um... We don't need T anymore because T was being calculated to, I'm going to guess, slightly warp the texture. So that way when we did the laser beam, it, you got a little nicer looking texture. What it probably did is put the texture somewhere in the middle, but uh, we're not going to figure that one out right now. So we have some math here that figures out the exact size of everything. So we know our size is already going to be a certain modifier, and we know there's an end modifier length. End modifier, if we put a debug line here, is 1. Is it always 1? It's always 1. Okay, so we can get rid of that. End modifier is probably used, was probably something added um, by Calclavia because he couldn't get the math to work just right and wanted to manipulate the renderer rather than fix the math. You'll find a few times in his code he's done that. Um, hopefully he's learned from his mistakes because uh, I know he's making games now and I'd rather not be have to go find his games and be like, oh, come on, Calc, you made the same mistake you made like four years ago. Um, so we get var29. This is controlling our length by our size. So we have a size control variable. So this is right roughly what we want to manipulate right here. So we want to figure out what our length is. Uh, we want to figure out in equal size units. That's the trick with this. Um, so we want to go int l equals this dot length. And of course, I have to. Uh, actually, we're not going to cast this because it might go up instead of down. So we want to do math, uh, math utility. Well, it doesn't really matter what I call though. There's so many different, mo so many different things that have so many different math helpers. Um, in this case, I think I'm using Minecraft math helper. I have my own, which does legitly the same thing this does. Um, I actually went and when I made it, I decided like, hey, I want to get my own math utilities and stuff because I have a thing called Coding Lib, which I use and outside of Minecraft. It's actually been used outside there. And I was like, hey, I want all these the same methods. Um, didn't really necessarily copy Minecraft's code because I can't do that legally. But I went through and went like, oh, these got cosine methods, sine methods. And I went out and then I made my own methods. They do basically the same thing with only minor modifications between them to actually change behavior. But we got our L value. And this will be, I'm assuming, our length in meters. So if we actually put a break line here, and I actually need to reload the code or it's not going to work properly, uh, hit play again. If we go down a line, uh, 
It should be 13. The L value isn't showing up here because I think Java has code designed that if you're not using this, it'll just completely utterly ignore it. Okay, so it'll be 13 meters. So then what we can do, remove this break line real quick. Uh, hit play so I don't have that break line running. And we can do if, or we do four int, uh, we'll just int i equals zero. i is less than l, i plus plus. Might actually have to be i equal to l, but uh, we'll do it real quick here. So actually we'll, do, we'll make this one and we'll do that just so the math is slightly easier. So we know we have a size value of how big this actually should be. Now we can take and do this in two options. We can use our size value to calculate how big we want our texture to actually be, or we can ignore that and then we can just make sure it's always a meter. I'm gonna go with the size value, even though that actually will generate more shapes. Um, it'll result in a nicer looking texture. So, but because I actually have done that, I actually need to do, I need to redo this math because this will only give me the length of meters and I could loop the meters and we could get a, an actual result. But our size is not in meters, it's it's in partial meters. So it's, in this case, it's 0 0.02. If I actually go up here. Actually, that's not our, I don't think that's our proper size value. Let me actually check to see if I can figure out what the size is real quick before I keep making assumptions. Um, put a break line there. Size is one. Actually, that'll work. So we want to do some math here. Although right there, it says our size is actually something completely different. Because then we're, we're mod okay, si I guess in this case, size is gonna be our, our float modifier. In this case, what a float modifier is, is you end up with a value between zero and one, and you want to increase your object by that float value. Say I wanted it to be 50% of the size, I pass a value of 0 0.5, and that cuts my size in half. If I want to be double, I pass in a value of two. If I want to be three times the size, three, then I pass in three. And then that will modify this value here. So what we actually need to do is do a final uh, double, um, render size value and we want to set that to 0 0.15 D and then we can go through and then replace each one of these and that'll give us a static value here so we don't have to worry about that but then what we can also do is then calculate how how many of these objects we need so let me see how I want to do that we know what our length is going to be so what we want to do is make a new double here. Um, hmm. No, this needs to be an int. Call it int count, and this will be this dot length divided by render size and then we want to do I want to say math.floor so you have a slight stretching at the very end um, if it becomes a problem I can actually go down here and do what's, what's this oh, yeah, path returns it in. I'm actually going to call the Minecraft version saves me from having to cast it um, so that'll give me the number of count. So say our, this is value of here, and we have 13 meters is what we have, divided by 0.15. We're gonna get 86 units. It's gonna be a lot of objects rendering, because then you have to times this by four if we decide to make the rope four side. It's 346 faces being rendered, which isn't actually that bad, but what we might end up coming and doing here later is I actually might ask my uh, texture artist to go ahead and give me a larger texture. That way I can then go, well, the rope can actually render like at three meter lengths. And then I don't have to build larger faces. 
because the big ideal reason we're doing this is I don't want to stretch the texture because when you stretch the texture they don't doesn't look appropriate we got our count so we want to do this times count less than count um, and we need to store the easiest way to do this is we're then going to store our current position essentially position equals zero and then we can do position plus equals render size and we just pass in position here that should in theory work don't quote me on that though let's say one of the least things I actually ever do is uh, work on render code it's very rare I actually will mess with render code um, I did not get at all the effect I wanted. I uh, let's, I have no clue what that what we did. <laughs> We're back to having that uh, tapered edge thing. Um, so something's not right here. Because this is our X position. This is our Y position. We know we're passing in zero for V12. What we literally want to do is just go one after the other. Maybe I need to increment the X position. Let's, uh, let's copy this real quick and control Z a few times. So V type was length times size. And that basically means V29 was always the same value. It was always rendering with the full length. That means this should work. So we'll go ahead and redo. Could be our UVs are wrong. So here we're getting this will be negative. This will be yeah, negative Z. So this will be negative size. You know, if these are the same value, why are they uh, why are there two different results? So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, replace some code here so we can simplify. And then we don't need 17b, so we'll simplify again. Um, so we got an x positive, we got an x negative. So I'm assuming these are both sides of our line. So this would be like left, this would be like top, this would be like bottom. Okay, from far as we can tell, that is working. We are getting a left and right render on there. What we're working on is the length, and the length isn't producing correctly. Uh, let's get through this brightness value. I just saw that there. See if that makes a difference. That uh, has made some kind of difference. You see at the very end, there is a shadow now on the uh, the render. So we'll go with that. Let's see what else I can think of here. Um, let's, let's remove the color. Just set it to default. Uh, still at white. Doesn't exactly help us any. We're getting this little, we're still getting those three Tetris type behavior there. Let's go ahead and put a break line here. 
Okay, position is zero. Position is 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.45. You know the best way we can actually tell if this is working is uh, I'm going to set this to a maximum of three, and I'm going to tell it to skip two. Uh, or actually, I want it to skip because it'll go zero, one, and then two, so I want to skip one. And then we can see if it is actually tiling correctly. Um, then you hit play on here. Remove that debug line. Hit play. It is actually tiling. Unfortunately, we're getting some weird behavior out of the tiling. It actually is rotating, which is not what I wanted to do. Oh, you know what? This is probably why it's rotating. Geo rotation call in there. Aha! No more rotations. Okay, so now we want to restore our actual counter here and we want to say if I percent two equals zero so we say like every other we want to render that'll tell us if we're tiling correctly and we're not I don't think we're tiling correctly because you see we got like a nice line going on here um, I think we do have overlap in our line render You know what, what's going on here is, you see how these are zero? These need to be position minus uh, render size. That, that's why we're getting the, the, the weird overlap we're getting. Aha, look at that nice beautiful tiling. Uh, it's still transparent, which means somewhere in the render code there is some transparency being applied. Let's see if we can go hunt it down. Um, so rotation, 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 uh, there's some color depth change here, which means there's probably, it's probably something to do with this stuff. So we'll start disabling things and we'll start re-enabling them as we need them. Because in reality, we shouldn't really need much here. Um, I've got other particle effects that do not have this kind of code in it and they work just fine. Uh, well, oh, oh, look at that. Still transparent, but now you can't see it from the other side, which is, uh, that is actually normal, which means one of these things actually turned on a, uh, a render effect where you can see through. So we know we don't need any of this stuff, so we can say goodbye to it. Um, we definitely don't need V12 anymore, which means we don't need V11, which means we don't need slide. Look all that code I can get rid of. You know, it's concerning when I see that right there, where it, something's calling tessellator.draw. Start drawing quads. Somebody's cheating. <laughs> That's what that is. Uh, this isn't really that big of an issue. Um, this could cause a render bug though. I've done this when I've done uh, block renders before where you turn the render, you tell it to render, then you do your render code, then you tell it to start rendering again. This That actually does break things. Um, there apparently are render checks that are supposed to handle that, but I'm not gonna touch it right now but we're gonna keep working on this stuff and something is set the UV to transparent. I can't seem to find that code. There's nothing in here that does it as far as I can tell, unless there's something in here. Now this handles rotation code. Yeah, I don't see anything in here. Um, 
let's let's uh let's see if we can set the collar. So we'll go to tessellator dot set collar, and we'll do RGBA, and then we'll just set the alpha to one. And let me guess, these are integers, and it wants floats. Actually, what do you want? You know, you do want integers. Um, and what are these stored in? These are stored as floats. So we need to times them by 255. <clears throat> Actually, is there a set RGBA with an F? Yeah, there is, which is uh, what I was not using, but um, it's close. Okay, let's see if that actually works. Um, still transparent. Now, this actually begs the question if the texture I have is transparent or it's actually something with the render code. Now we can check this really quick just to be 100% sure so we're not sitting here doodling with, uh, or rather I'm not sitting here doodling with things. I just realized I keep saying we One of the dumbest things ever when you start uh, acting like a corporation is you start using the word uh, we more often than I, and it gets stuck in your head. Uh, let's see, Bill Broken, um, let's see, Minecraft, Requests, Textures, and okay, so we have a rope texture, and if we open it up with GIMP, then we'll be able to see alpha. I don't think it's an alpha. Simple fix to fix alpha, by the way, is just literally go and paint and save it again and all the alpha will be gone. Um, I'm not seeing any alpha, but it's really hard to tell, and I think there is. So we're going to make a new layer here. Um, oh, that's not what I want. Uh, new layer. Thank you. We're going to put the layer behind here. And one of the easiest ways to actually do this is to start darkening the layer behind it. And I can't see through it, so... Weird thing is throwing me off is that... Uh, see how this has got a checkered pattern going on it? If I do this, my background's got a checkered pattern. But they're not the same. So I don't think it's got an alpha. So it's not that. So we'll discard changes real quick. So something's uh, applying an alpha transparency. And it might just be residual, residual rendering. So let me go ahead and break the grappling hook so I can walk around for one. And then we'll put it again. Um, no, still got an alpha. Ah, uh, I... To be honest, I'm just not going to worry about it because I've got other things I need to really work on. Like, for example, I got to get the size down a bit here. We're going to set the size to an 8. Oh, well, I uh, forgot the 0. Um, yeah, it looks about a reasonable rope size. Then I need to figure out how to duplicate this part. I'm not sure why this is actually drawing quads one after another. Because, I mean, if, if we're pretty confident that the particle system is a quad-based system, then there's no need to call a draw on this. Oh, see my uh, phone is exploding with Facebook. And you see those pop up in the corner there as well. Um, hmm. So we don't need this. So let's get rid of that. Actually, let's bring that back, because that's, that's like collar with occupancy F. So let's switch these real quick. Oh, didn't mean to hit backspace on that. And we'll see if we get a different result. 
Uh, nope, no different result. This will something I have to do with them later, but what I need to do is start recoding this. So this is uh, the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and do the top. So the top just literally needs to be an inverted version of this. Um, the UVs are probably the same. The trick is I actually don't remember how to do this. But there is there is uh, some helping stuff for I can do with this real quick. Um, so let me see if I can find some render code from another mod real quick. Because um, Minecraft blocks render exactly like this. They actually have literally a four call per face, and then they'll render. So then we need to, let's say, what was the last mod I worked on that I had an ISBR for? I want to say probably basic industries. But I remember I was working on another mod here that I was messing with ISBRs. Ah, yeah, it was ISBM Classic. So I believe the explosives got an ISBR for him. Or some of the blocks have ISBRs. Probably is the explosives. there. Okay, here's a render missile. Ha, ah, render bomb block. There's the S mine render. And then there's render utility render normal block. Um, so we actually want to go work at render utility then. Okay, what it does is it changes the normals. So it goes tessellator, set normals, then draw. Tessellator, set normal, then draw. And this is, I believe, the bottom. But that's the top. Luckily, we actually probably could co code this or copy this code directly. But uh, let me go figure out what the uh, face values look like. Oh yeah, they got a lot of code in here. <laughs> I got a lot of set brightness calls, set vertex with UV, set brightness. See, they're calling set color occupancy too, but they're calling it between each run. Interesting. I think they have like a faded color system. Oh yeah, this is for when uh, the light system is turned on. I forgot about that. But here's what it has, this is literally the code, the same exact code I'm running right now. They just have slightly different UVs. Um, so they're calling D12, D3, D14. Okay, so let's look at D4 let's, through D10. These are the UVs. Okay, so they're just simply grabbing the size right here with these values. So ren render minimum, render maximum. This is probably a zero. That's probably a zero as well. Okay, so. Damn, my phone is exploding with text messages. Nothing important though. I gotta hate it when Facebook spams you. I don't even use the software either. Um, it somehow magically installed itself on my phone. And now I've got pretty much getting 30 40 messages a day and it has nothing to do with me it's all related to people I've friended with but these are people I friended with like over 10 years ago actually it's been sooner than that uh, I want to say six years six seven years somewhere around that range okay but these are zero that's gonna be a zero zero actually that's a zero that's a one that's a zero and that's also a one I think And then that's D3 would be a zero. So there's your zero right there.
Being the UVs will be the hardest part of getting this, because I can prob probably figure out the uh, the location data. So if you actually go back to our grappling hook, actually let me close down some of these other things. Okay, so our Y position is going to remain the same for pretty much everything. Um, let's do this real quick. Double start equals position. That way we're not multiply recalculating. It'll just a really slight improvement in render speed. It won't equal a frame rate, but um, it'll be just enough that it'll matter. So technically, these UVs actually shouldn't change any, because all we're going to be doing is rotating everything. So as long as these UVs are good, then I can use them down here. Um, actually, between the top and the bottom, I don't need to change any code, because all I need to do is just space them out, which I believe will be the z-axis here. Um, which I'm going to say... I need to flip the normal stuff. That's the, uh, that's the trick. So we know this is the bottom block, because 0 is bottom, 1 is top. So we want to do set normals here, and then we want to set normals as positive here. Um, then just because we're already doing this, I'm going to do draw quads between each one. Yeah, it looks good. And I believe I'm going to have to copy this. Now let's go ahead and just clean up this part so it's not there. And we'll set... Actually, we'll set it after the normals. And we'll reload. And if this is coded correctly, um, it is not because I can't see anything. Uh, I do see a bottom. I do not see a top. Now the hard part about figuring this out is which one of these did we mess up? Let's go stare at uh, render blocks here real quick. So we know which, by the way, these actually wouldn't be zero in the actual code, but relatively, there's it's a zero. Uh, because they use actual texture sheets, like, say, this was min max, for, or min x, um, this could actually be, like, 200. And then down here at z, it would probably also be 200. Or actually, it might not be 200. It, it depends on how the texture sheet's laid out. But in this case, these are probably going to be zeros and stuff. So, D3 and D5 are zeros. So then we go down here, we got D3 and D5 are both zeros. So these are a zero, zero coordinate. So let me go back to mine. Yeah, I got a zero, zero coordinate there. Okay, and then I got a zero on the first one. I got a one here. So let's put a zero there. Try to get my UV synced up properly. Um, some of these are not quite matching, so we know that's a zero, and that's a zero. What is D6? D6 is probably a height calculator. Okay, apparently D10 and D6 are the same value. D6 is prived off of the max V value. Oh, right, here it is, D6. Um, so that would be maximum Z, so that would be a 1. So D6 and D10 are ones. Um, D6, D10. So these should be both ones at the bottom. Probably 
probably gonna have to double check this. Okay, well, let, me, let me go find what D7 and D9 actually are. D7 and D9. D7 isn't calculated, but D7 is set to D3 if textures are flipped. We don't want flip though. So where's D7 set at? D7 is set to D4. D4 we know... You know what, I just realized I scrolled down to Z negative. Um, I have code, you know what, I have code somewhere here that is much more simplified. Let me go find it real quick. So I'm sitting here guessing and I, I realized I've done this before. I think this mod right here has it. Because this one has a static render for the dynamic machine. Uh, that's not that method, it is here. So this one renders essentially a whole bunch of small cubes to make the model up. So that way, as long as you're not touching machines or doing anything to them, your frame rate doesn't collapse when you're rendering stuff. And it does have... You know, I could just call render render face y. What are the stipulations of calling this? Um, I mean, we I know we're in quad textures, so there's nothing against it. The trick is we would have to have a block. We would have to have an icon. Uh, I don't want to make an icon, so we're going to have to do this the hard way. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and close Minecraft down, because I'm going to have to copy some code real quick. Um, I really hope these all actually render the same, because I'm not seeing, like, the only thing I'm really seeing difference between all the UVs is that they just, actually there's no difference, really, and we probably could check this too, but we're going to go ahead and copy this method. We're going to copy it to our web code, and then we're going to tweak it until we get it working. Um, so, we don't have an override texture, um, but we're going to go ahead and this is a zero. This is a one, this is a zero, and this is a one. So we're going to preset those. We don't need to worry about this. Uh, we don't have any rotation, although I, it's kind of cool to figure out Minecraft does support rotation on your textures because I can actually now go through and replace uh, so many amounts of work that I put into my code simply because I decided I wanted to have rotation. Uh, and this is going to be... Shoot, we don't have any of this code, do we? Oh, we, we have this, why is this acting up? Oh, because there's an underscore behind it. Okay, so there's no there's no render min max x y any of that kind of stuff going on here. Um, so the, all these values should stay about the same, and we can sit here and look at how they they work and interact with each other. So we don't have any fancy lighting, um, at least not right now. So here's what that whole code turned into once you cut all the the, the crap out of it. Um, and then we can start refactoring these. So we know this is our x. We know that this is our Y. We know that this is our Z. We don't need the icon because we're not rendering with an icon and we don't need the world because we're not checking any specific like lighting values or anything. Um, so now we're looking at D11 turns into our X value. So anytime we see D11, we replace it with an X. Um, same with D12, this is our X value, and this is our X value, and we go with D13 is our Y, now what, I actually need to uh, control Z a few times, I realized what those, uh, uh, doot doot, click click click, We may not actually have render min maxes here, but I'm going to copy this 
and then we're going to redo everything, and then I'm going to replace those lines back again. So this is an X. That's a Y. Just change that to Z real quick. Actually, we can control Z a couple times again and make this slightly easier on us. Okay. So we know this is our X value. This is our Y value. And this is our Z value. What these are, which I deleted a little too quickly, are our min max values. So we, this would be, if we were rendering a full size block, this would be zero, that would be one, this would be zero, that would be one, and this would be, or actually this would be zero with one, well. Um, so we got a minimum or y value. So all be calculated in the position data technically. But we're gonna go ahead and comment these out and put them next to there. So we, we at least know that they were there at once upon a time. Um, and then we just gotta do this real quick and then delete this. And then we can go back to plotting everything out. Um, let's go ahead and actually start renaming these two. So this is our min x. This is our max x. Oh, that looks pretty good. So we, we actually know that these are equivalent to what I'm already doing up here. So I've got a min x and I've got a max x. As these are calculated up here, so there's our min x, there's our max x. If we say here and rename this one, this is our min y value. min z value, and then our max z value. Yeah, that works out pretty well. So we know exactly what these are now. And this means it makes it a lot easier for us to actually render this face. The UVs, in theory, should never change. Um, I mean, quite literally, some of these are being set directly to D4 and stuff. So let me, where's D7? So this will be uh, D4. Are you used anymore anywhere else? I don't think you are, even though you're highlighting as if you are. Uh, D8 is D3. We no longer need it. D9 is D5. Means we no longer need that variable. D10 is D6. And we cut that out. And now we can start uh, renaming these. So this will be... Um, Actually, hold on. I need to go back to our block render and look at what these were. So this is a render min x is what this would be. And if we make sure we name all this stuff, then won't, what I can do is I can save this method here later. If uh, oh, I'm trying to rename it. This is where lack of sleep kind of doesn't do you well. And I believe this was, if I just can do this, I, all I have to do is change the last value to, to max. If we look over back to uh, render blocks, that's max x, and then it's min z and max z. But yeah, if we, we get this all worked out, and we figure out what everything does, then it's really easy to duplicate this method over and over again and figure out exactly what you want to do. But when you're looking at obfuscated code, which is the reason why I tell people when you're working with Minecraft code, it's, it's okay to take the time and uh, copy some of the values. It, there's nothing wrong with sitting there and copying a Minecraft method and then going through and renaming everything. Because at the end of the day, you're going to understand it better, even though if somebody yells at you and go, well, you just copied the whole method. It's like, yeah, I copied the whole method, but now I can read it. So I copied the render face negative value, but now I can read this whole thing. And I can check to see if this render code is exactly the same as another render code, which it pretty much is. My lights are flickering. Anyways, I'm going to end this video here because my lights are flickering and I'd rather not lose a recording mid-run and I'll go ahead and upload this and everything and I'll make another video of me working on the rest of this and upload it as well and uh, try to get some more of these videos out later this week, next week, etc, etc.